So I want to continue with our work in 22250. In the last video, we were shooting the 40 grain Hornady VMAX with AR Comp. We had some promising groups, but we ran into a few problems, mainly with the shooter. So I've removed the sling studs from the gun, and I'm hoping today I'm going to be able to get a more uh, stable bag set up and do my part a little bit better. The other thing was the, uh, the Tasco scope that was on the gun. I just don't really have any confidence in it. I, I just want to try something else. So I've mounted a 24 power Weaver benchrest scope on there. Now, since the last video, I did speak with my brother and he was telling me that when he was working with my grandfather to get the gun set up, they ended up messing up a scope. I, th I think they, they crushed a scope tube and that scope had to go back or what. There was a little bit of drama there going on with the scope. It's been a long time. And my brother couldn't remember exact details. I think I know why now. The scope base on this gun is awful. I mean, I th it's, it's a good base and it's a sturdy base. I think that's fine. But the, I think it's got, it's got 50 years of old Loctite stuff in there. So the threads feel really crappy and I tried my best to get them cleaned out. But also just the design and the way the the screws align, the thing kept getting bound up. It, like it, it was a very, very difficult scope mounting procedure. I think I got it on there. I think I got it good. I think we're going to be just fine today. But I, I think it's just time to put a new scope base on this gun, which won't be that expensive. And if I put a 30 millimeter set of rings on it, then I've got scopes we can use for testing. And then eventually you know, I've got a bunch of scopes laying around that I'd be happy to put on the gun and give to my brother but I just don't have that much in one inch like we're dealing with now. So that's for the future. I'm not gonna let this, you know, kind of derail the project here. I think we're in good shape. We'll see how things shoot today. If the groups are good today and I like the way the sight picture looks with this crosshair and everything, we, we may leave this scope on there for the duration and just put the new base on at the end once we've got our loads done. But we'll see how it goes today and we'll play it by ear. Today I wanna to load up 25 shots with the 50 grain nozzle ballistic tip varmint. We did shoot a couple groups with this bullet in the very first video. Uh, we were using AR Comp and Stayball 6.5, and a couple of those groups were pretty decent. I want to move on to some different powders today, though. I want to load up 15 shots with Varget. We'll shoot 35.5 grains. We'll load it at standard overall length, 2.350, and those 15 shots, we'll, we'll use those to get our scope zeroed, and hopefully we'll have enough left over to shoot a group, see what accuracy looks like. The other powder I want to try is H380. After I had picked out Varget, I was just looking for a second powder to try out today, and H380 was listed as the most accurate powder tested in the nozzle manual, so we'll give it a shot. And that, I want to shoot uh, 39.0 grains. We're going to stick with the same primer, the Federal GM 210Ms, and the brass we're going to shoot today is Once Fired Norma Brass, and this has been uh, annealed and then cleaned a little bit. I use the salt bath annealing where you, you dunk the, the neck down into a, a bath of molten salt and those salts are really corrosive. So ended up clean, cleaning them, but mainly just to get the salt off. Cause you know, shooting like this, here's, here's a piece of brass we fired in the last video. You know, they're not dirty at all. So if it wasn't for the salt bath, probably would just be holding off on any tumbling. So that's, that's it. I need to do everything. Need to resize these guys got one of the Redding Deluxe three die sets and the expander ball is one of the Redding carbide expanders. You can see it kind of floats there. So that's that's what we're going to use. Get a number with the headspace comparator here. It looks like 1.557 is our starting point. Yep, starting out at 1.557. That took a lot of force going up in there. Yeah, so it looks like I'm not quite hitting the shoulder yet. It actually grew just a little bit. This guy's kind of been fighting me a little bit. I think I finally got there. Like five adjustments later. Yeah, we're just barely bumping it. Like half thousandth, or yeah, thousandth of an inch which is just, just about perfect. So I measured out the 25 pieces and none of them need trimmed. So our trim length is 1.902 and these are, most of them are in the 1.906, 1.907 range. The longest one I saw was 1.910. So not worried about trimming. So I've got just a little bit of 99% rubbing alcohol on here to wipe off some lube 
And then I'm just hitting up that, you know, we've already got an existing chamfer on our case mount. So just a little, just a little touch to make sure it's still nice and clean and smooth. And then that piece is ready for a primer. Now back in the first video, the primers went into this Norma brass extremely tight. And here after their first firing, they're still pretty tight. Like I would still consider these tight primer pockets, but they've loosened up enough to where it's a little more comfortable to get that primer in and seated where you want it. If you've never loaded with H380 before, it's a ball powder that's almost perfectly spherical. Like most of our ball powders are kind of flattened balls. These, these are just little spheres. I don't load that much with H380. Whenever I think about similar powders or I'm looking for, you know, this sort of an application, it's generally one of the newer options, you know, like CFE223 or Power Pro 2000 MR or the new Stayball 65 on the Hodgson site, the page for H380 says it's called H380 because I guess 38.0 worked well with a 52 grain bullet in what would later become 22250. So maybe that's why I don't have the love for H380 that I should. It's about to make me a believer here in 22250. All right, we've been through this process with this bullet before, so it should be pretty straightforward. Let's see, way back in the first video, I had written down a cartridge-based ogive measurement of 1.968 to give us a 2.350 inch overall length. So, so I'm currently 133 thousandths long, so let's just dial it in exactly. Okay, so I hit my cartridge base to ogive target exactly, 1.968. Let's see if our 2.35 overall length is about right. Pretty darn close. Two and a half thousandths off is good with me. So that should be it. None of these are compressed loads with either powder. So we don't have to worry about that messing with our die setting. All right, I am feeling really good about my bag setup today. I've been out here like an hour, just kind of working on it, setting it up. Then once I got it the way I wanted it, did a little bit of dry firing, just a little bit of practice. You'll notice I've got a four end stop now. So every time I'm lining up, it should be right there against that. Puts us back in the same position. And it also kind of like a you can load a bipod. It gives you a little bit of something to push against because, you know, big boy rifle cartridges, you need you need some shoulder behind the gun, and that's hard to do whenever your stock's just floating. You also see, you know, today it's sliding a lot easier. So I powdered my bags, so that should work a lot better. Before, I had kind of intentionally left them a little bit sticky feeling because that's what I was using, you know, whenever I was putting my shoulder behind the gun. I was relying on friction with the bags, and that's just bad. Like, there's nothing good about that when it comes to trying to shoot a small group. So our new scope, this is a Weaver T-Series. It's a 24 by 40 fixed power scope. It is so much clearer than that last scope. Like it is really beautiful look through. Itty bitty tiny little, I think it's an eighth minute dot at the crosshair. So assuming I got it mounted well enough to where it's not gonna be moving on us, no excuses related to the scope. Now the funny thing is I took it out, mounted it, and just kind of looked down the board just now. It looks like it's lined up just right already. So haven't made a single click, I expect to be on paper. So the gun, we are, yeah, 22250. This is a Douglas barrel, 26 inch Douglas barrel with a one in 14 twist. And this is a Remington 788. So, all right, let's, uh, let's get this scope zeroed. We'll start with our Varget load, 35.5 grains of Varget. We've got 15 of these, so plenty of them to get zeroed and still shoot a group. So I expect our velocities to be well below 
3900, so we can use the lab radar chronograph. The target is at 100 yards, and we're using the shot marker electronic target system. That's what you see above. So let's see if it see if it hits the paper. Just going to aim at the center of the whole target. See where we're at. So our muzzle velocity is 3644. That's in the ballpark I was expecting. And it looks like we hit the paper. Good. So it looks like this scope has quarter minute clicks. The, the T-series that's on the 6PPC has eighth minute clicks. All right, that should be in the ballpark. Better look at this first piece of Varget brass. Looking pretty good. Yeah, it looks great. Let's zoom our shot marker in a little bit. And we'll see if we can hit this left hand dot here. Get rid of that other shot. Almost forgot to get up against my foreign stop that time. Yeah, that hold feels awesome. Let's shoot another. I guess we could zoom in a little bit more now. Oh, crap. Things were looking good. So what I am still fighting a little bit once the you know once the real rounds start going off is a little bit of rotation, getting those crosshairs to naturally line up the way I want them is taking a little bit of kind of rotational tweaking. So what I could do, uh, what I probably need to do is buy another front bag, basically the same as this one. You know, just uh, hey, I'll show you guys after I'm done shooting maybe. But this one fits a lot of my rifles more, so I don't want to try and stuff more sand into it. I think I just need one that's that's uh, you know stuffed a little bit better for particularly narrow rifles like this. I mean, I could try and bring it back to a thicker portion of the stock. The stock doesn't really get much thicker until you know right back here. Yeah, I think well, I think we'll we'll be okay. I'll just continue to roll with it. Maybe as I shoot more, you know, my my rear bag will settle in more. Maybe the front bag will set, settle in more, and it'll uh, start feeling a little bit more natural. All right, let's see what our velocity so far is with six shots. So the average came out to 3648, but I've got an extreme spread of 104 and a standard deviation of 33. Yeah, there was one shot that was only 3596. We'll have to, yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. I'll have the chronograph running the whole time. So yeah, we'll see, see what the 15 shot sample size looks like. All right, I'm gonna give the gun a minute to cool down. And we'll try it again. Still have nine shots left here with the Varget load. Okay, I've had a nice long cool down. Let's shoot a good group. All right, that one's a little, little bit better. All right, got four more of these. I'm gonna go ahead and shoot them. We'll make this a nine shot group. How about that? I like that very much. <laughs> Nine shots, 0.61 inches. Let's unhide all those ones from earlier. 
Okay, so our 14 shot group is 1.1 inches. And this one stupid flyer, if we get rid of it, takes it from 1.1 down to 0.74. Not bad at all. I'll take it. Feeling so much better about my shooting today. And feeling pretty good about, you know, this, this sort of accuracy. But these velocity numbers kind of concern me. Because this, this Varget load, even a max load of Varget, you know, right now we're shooting 35.5. But even if we go up towards max, it's still a lot of empty case. Yeah, so our final average velocity was 36.54. I guess I should write this down. Final standard deviation was 28.9 with an extreme spread of 104. So definitely hoping we'll, we'll be able to find something a little bit better than that. All right, so I'm going to give this guy a nice long cool down. And we'll move on to H380. Okay, target is clear. It's been it's been almost 45 minutes, so guns had plenty of time to cool off. Let's move on. 39.0 grains of H380. Wow, velocity 38.29. Our brass looks great. Let's bear down. See if we can shoot a group. Take a little break here halfway. Yeah, that fifth shot kind of opened it up a little bit, didn't it? What were we shooting before that? So right now we're at a 0.74 inch. Yeah, we were at a 0.53 inch. I'm feeling pretty good about the shooting. Like I feel like I'm holding pretty well. Things seem pretty consistent. All right, so far our average velocity is 38.25. We've got a standard deviation of 9.3 and an extreme spread of 21. So much, much better numbers than we were seeing with Varget. All right, five more shots. Let's finish off strong. What in the world happened there? That shot felt perfectly fine. Man, just had to be the last one of the day too. So that's what we're going to remember. Worst flyer of the day. Well, that gives us a 1.14 inch 10 shot group. Let's get rid of the ones we don't like. Definitely that one. The other nine went into 0.82 inches. And I guess that guy there. Yep, the best eight were into 0.66. So it looks pretty promising, but I definitely cannot explain number 10. Let's see what our final velocity numbers look like. Okay, 10 shot average was 38.20 with a 16.2 standard deviation and an extreme spread of 52. That extreme spread is exactly half of what we saw with Varget. So Varget had 104 and H380 had 52. Tell you what, I'm feeling pretty good about today's proceedings. This scope is not going anywhere. I love looking through this thing. It is very clear and that dot allows for some super precise aiming. So like I mentioned earlier, I still think I want to get, you know, a, a mount and go with a different scope for the permanent setup for my brother. But for our testing, this is going to be perfect. Tell you what, I'll grab the camera off the tripod, give you a quick look at the at the setup here. So here are the holes we actually put in on paper today. These are all 25 shots. This was a clean dot before we got started. So there's that low flyer with H380, and this is that high flyer with Varget, but the rest of them packed right in there pretty nice. So this might be a challenge with this lens, but 
So this is the, the rear bag I showed in the last video that's got the tall ears and, you know, grips the stock halfway decent. And it wasn't quite tall enough, so I do have a block under here that's got some really soft suede type of leather that's very grippy and the bag doesn't go anywhere and neither does the block, so it works out pretty well. Around this way, I do have a bag here to, uh, you know, rest my, rest my wrist, make trigger control a little bit easier. It's actually a Cordura bag with nice soft leather one on top. So my beautiful four end stop is just a quarter 20 bolt with some washers and nuts. And then a couple layers of heat shrink on here. Worked out pretty well. The original one for this rest is long gone. No idea where it's at. So that's pretty much it. And I think spending some time today, just getting it all set up just the way I want. I think it really paid off. I got no explanation for those flyers, but we'll get that figured out. Not much to talk about back at the bench, so let's just have a look at the brass here real quick. It all looks fantastic. I don't see anything to worry about at all. So I think that's where we'll leave this one. It feels like we're ready to get down to some serious work now. And that probably means that 55 grain gold dot. That bullet in particular, I want to, I want to come up with something that shoots well. So that's it for now. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.